Hi everybody, I'm George Call for part three of Backbone Trail. Wow, this was the introduction of the new limited palette. Looks like a mess right now, but basically, you know, it's red, yellow, blue with a gray mixer and a, you know, a cool mixture and a warm mixture, which is Naples and cold gray. And of course, titanium white. So, I'm just so surprised I chose this Reference, it's uh, not too far from my house, it's just the devil's backbone, but to contrast some warms and cools, and man, we really got some punch out of this, this painting. Punch, I mean contrast. So, um, I'm really excited about this series of three paintings to do this. Pretty scary about starting with a new limited palette, going from 19 colors to 6. It's a big step for me and probably a good step for you, and a big step for you, I mean. So, uh, that's what we did today. And um, so the important thing is that you paint along with me. I'm going to provide paintings every week, except this is the Christmas holiday. We'll get started again here in a few weeks in January. Get your paintings critiqued by a reputable person. Be glad to do that for you. And um, uh, subscribe to this channel and get outside and paint. A little cold right now. But if you can't get outside and paint, at least get outside and start taking some photographs and uh, enjoy your painting. Thanks so much for coming by. I appreciate you being part of this process. Painting together is really important. And uh, enjoy. All right. Let's watch the video. All right. Bye-bye. Good morning again, and thanks for coming in for part three of Backbone Trail. This uh, particular painting has been quite a stretch for me, and perhaps some of you, because um, what we did here was introduce a limited palette. Say again, Anthony. Have you muted us? No, you need to mute yourself. Thank you. So... Today, in this particular painting, we started with a um, yellow, red, blue uh, with two mixers. That would be a, a Naples and a gray, and of course a white. So uh, again, we went uh, from 19 colors down to six, and it is quite an exercise to say the least. So um, with that, I... Uh, you can see from the overhead camera, I laid out a lot of mixtures, basically, greens and grays, to kind of get familiar with the, um, the uh, mixtures. Also, I wanted to reintroduce uh, the things I use on my, my palette. These are my three uh, uh, knives that I use the most. And I'll show this to my zoomers. And uh, this one, of course, is totally for mixing, and this is for scraping and mixing also. I just find uses for all three of them. I think if I was to choose one, I would choose this one right here. You know, kind of a spoon type shape. I also use a razor blade knife to clean off my glass palette. What um, I try to do is um, save the mixtures that need to be saved. And these thin mixtures that I have taking up space, I get rid of them. Because I do need a mixing space. I usually have a bigger mixing space, uh, but uh, getting familiar with these new colors, I have these mixtures up here. Well, today is, I hope, final day, and I want to bring this painting to an end. And I really am impressed how far we got yesterday with these... Uh, bush designs and and this uh, I came up with this crazy idea for green grays and whites up in the sky and uh, came in this morning still like it so um, tune in to part two if you want to see how we did this sky but I got a valuable new look when I came in and I made a mental note of what that was and I think I need a few more darks here in the dark and I need to lighten up some of this area in the uh, backbone. This is a rock formation behind my studio. 
So with that in mind, that's where I'm going to get started today is right up in here. So I'm going to start here and then go to here. So this is going to be A and this is going to be B. Taking a sip of my coffee and now I want to concentrate on some mixture. So <clears throat> one of my students, uh, Ralph, uh, was working with me last night when he sent me a, you know, picture of his, his progress and um, I'm going to probably tell him I'm going to do something different than I told him last night and I'm going to lighten up some of this area in here. I'd like more contrast between this and that because I want a little bit more punch. I mean, I like the painting the way it is. We did a lot of work yesterday on the stage I call balance. What needs to go darker, lighter, and what needs to be richer color and flatter color. That's what we did a lot yesterday in the balance phase. But coming in today, I see that I, I need a few more lights in here. So I'm doing a little scraping in a few areas because I want to get some lights in there. So I'm going to mix up some Naples. I need a bigger mixing knife. So I'm using Naples. And I'm going to pick up a little bit of red. And I'm going to get some white in there. Oh, that's too light. My white was too strong. Still getting familiar with these mixtures. Now, this seems too light. And I'm going to throw in just a little bit of gray. What I've noticed with the limited palette, if you just do a little bit of of one of these colors, they're so strong, it has a tremendous influence on what we're doing. I'm going to throw in some more red. Now, it looks too light, but I'm going to take a shot at this and try it out on my canvas. So I'm going to start using a number six today. Since I cleaned my brushes in uh, Murphy's oil overnight, I clean out the Murphys in my Terp. And I'm going to load up both sides of this brush and I'm going to try some lighter value. Now I've got contamination on that side of the brush. I flip it over and make that big swap. I'm going to step back and see if that value works. And that has some good punch. So now I'm going to put that in some various areas. I think I need to squeeze some of this in a few areas. And I see more of it down in this area. And sometimes you have to wipe the contamination out before you contaminate your mixing pile, which I just did. Now, you can see some of these strokes are really bold and blunt at the end, and I'll need to soften those out. So I'm going to get some, uh, a little bit of uh, Naples and red, which is basically the same mixture we have with a little bit more red in it and put that in a few places and what that does it gives it when I look at the reference it's it's got some zing up here in this yellow ochre area up in here what is this is it's actually these same bushes, but in tremendous light. And I'm going to make a little bit more of this in some areas. And I'm also softening now the some of these blunt ends I have. So I'm using 
a uh, Naples and red again and softening some of the bottoms. I think I need more light on the far side, but I'm getting back to make that decision. Right now I'm mixing up a yellow and a red. Oh man, that red is so strong. Why didn't I know that? Sorry. I'm gonna add some Naples to that mixture. And I'll call this my zing color. Like that. Holy cow. Let me get some of that in the light area. Again, this one is a little different. I have red and uh, cad yellow light and just a little bit of Naples now. Wow! I like that! And let me get some of this up in our area up in here. What I notice about this bright light in the morning, I mean, believe it or not, this is the bushes and that is bushes up there, is that your light determines the value. It's not that so much, a, um, you know, the object itself. It's the light that seems to be calling the shots here. Right now I'm going to make some Naples white. Just a little bit of red. Jeez, that's strong. And I want to put a few more highlights in a few places. Ooh, strong, strong. Sometimes you just need big, bold strokes. That's what some of these are. And I'm going to write, bring some of that right up to the top. Too much of the same stroke drives people nuts when they look at it. Look at your painting. I'm going to go back to that uh, red and cad yellow light mixture and get that in a few more places. Now, these are going to be worked on here next. And I'm going to go to a red, yellow ochre, and white. And I'm going to lean on more on the yellow ochre now than the red. And let's see here. Let's get some of that in here. To add more light, sorry, more white, and put that in a few places. Got to remember to turn my brush over. All right, you may be noticing that at this stage of the painting, I do a lot more getting back. Because a little bit does a lot. So I want to go to a gray, a little bit of blue, ultra, and uh, I want to do some shadowing. I'm going to add a little bit of red to this. And there's some great shadows, edge of rocks here. And that's what I'm trying to do. Sorry to put my face here in the camera. I'm strengthening this mixture a little bit. I don't think you have to do a lot of this to 
say what you need to say, but no, that was a little too much emphasis in there. I'm going to put some little bit of a 50-50. This is uh, going to be I'm not, um, I'm going to say 80% uh, Naples and 20% or 30% of, of red in here. This red is so strong. Be, be cautious of it. And I really like some of these interplay between the yellow and the red to uh, give it some some zing, which I'm really trying to do at this stage of the painting. And I'm going to bring some of this red down in here. I make a kind of a yellow ochre type uh, mixture. I'm going to do that next. I need some mixing room, so I'm going to pick up some of these and get them over to the side. My waste paper basket is hidden from me. I have to kind of take a shot, throw it from underneath my, my palette here. Well, before I do that, this stroke is a little too strong. I'm going to go back into this yellow ochre mixture. So now, let's get some um, gray, red. Jeez, that red is strong. Ooh. Yellow. Yellow ochre. I'm sorry, um, Naples. And it should start looking like yellow ochre here pretty soon. And there we have it. Lighten it up a little bit. And I'm going to put that in the side of the hill here. Let me just get a few breaks in here. Okay, enough already. Get into it. Let me get some more gray. It needs to be darkened up just a little bit. A little bit more red. Oh, that's adding some emphasis up in here. All right, let me get back. Well, we're 15 minutes into this, and look, we have done a lot of territory here. I'm mixing up some uh, Naples and white. And let me bring some of this stuff and peek it in a few places. And some of that red I want to bring back and Make some bold statements in here with these reds. And if I put a dark behind it, it can kind of say, okay, I'm here to make a shadow. I think I have to be bolder than that. And if that's too bold, try to related to this guy up in here. Let me see if that's the too, too dark. I think it'll work for now. All right. Now, when I came in this morning, I said this needs to have some lighter lights in this area, and I've done that. And I want to maybe bring in just a few more in this area. 
Naples, white, just a touch of red. But now I need to also tell the story of darks. So let me do some cleaning of this warm area because I want to get into the cools. And I'm going to move this over and clean my palette. I don't know about you guys, but I get these calls from anywhere in Colorado. Like I'm getting one right now from Steamboat. I don't recognize this number, but every time I pick these things up, it's kind of a pause and then there's a recording of I need to do something to spend money. All right. I hope I don't hang up on any of you guys. But leave a message if I do. So, okay. I'm going to want to try to make a more of a rust uh, mixture. So I'm going to make a gray. Why am I using my brush? I'm going to make a gray, a red, and a yellow. And if you do that and balance it just right, you get kind of a, a subtle red rust olive. It's really, God, it's beautiful. I didn't know you could make such beautiful colors with these things. The other thing with these um, particular brands I'm using, they're not weak, they're mostly Rembrandts. Um, and I got one, I think the, uh, my yellow is a Gamblin uh, called Cad Lemon. Cad Light, about the same, I've never seen much of a difference between the two. And now, I'm mixing up both sides of my brush. And I'm going to see what I can do about getting some worms up in here. Kind of as a, maybe a transition. I think I've got to darken up this area down here for sure. And there's some darks kind of coming up in here from the reference and I want to try to get up in there. And I want to make some subtle green, so I'm going to go back next to this mixture of this warm here. I'm going to mix some um, ultra blue and yellow. Ultra blue, yellow. I'm going to add some gray to it. And I mixed it right next to this warm color. And I'm trying to kill my green a little bit with this gray. And I'll do that by adding some red. There we go, and that knocks down the green a little bit. Good way to knock down green is add red. Something to do with the color wheel. All right, I mixed those two things together, and I'm going to try one out up in here. And take a look at these greens. I'm going to add more blue to it. Going to make it even darker. And that is a rich dark green. I'm going to see what I can do about this might be an unwise thing to do because 
working on wet paint, but I'm going to bring in more blue here. Skinny this guy up. It's kind of a design thing. I'm thinking more that's what's going through my brain. And try that out. And let me continue with my subtle greens now. And what I'm doing is bringing some up to break this line a little bit. And it also helps emphasize the, just the importance of these darks. Again, at this stage of the painting, it's best to get back and keep looking at this. Oh, it is coming on very nicely. Now I'm going to mix the dark green that I made into this warm solution. To subtly change that mixture. And it doesn't call a lot of attention to itself. And it looks more southwest or, or western. Oh man, I love it. That is a nice mixture. What was that, George? Uh, you know, I made a, a, a dark green with ultra blue and cad yellow light. And I knocked it down with more ultra blue. And then I mixed it into that subtle color that I had, which was gray, red, and yellow. Kind of a yellow ochre, dark yellow ochre color. So I actually added some warm to this cool green is basically what happened there, Jan. Thank you. I'm going to mix up some, some blue and red to make a purple. And I'm going to mix it into my green a little bit and get some of that dark purple in there. And what I'm doing is darkening up this area in a subtle way. And I'm going to bring some of that, oops, lost my image. And you can get this image from my website. And what I see in the reference down here is some, some light on the top of bushes. So I'm going to go back to this mixture of red and Naples. And I'm going to add some of that down in here. My monitor is in the way. And I'll put a few sprigs of that up in, in here also. And I don't know if I'm achieving what I'm trying to do here. Let me make some more mixture of red and Naples. Try it. See if it works. Flip the brush over, George. I don't know if that's working or not. Let me get some real good darks in there and see what happens. Oh, I see some subtle designs. 
So I'm using the end of my brush to get something sharp in here. As things go back, they get thinner. And I'm getting some darks under these subtle reds I just put in. This time I'm going to use some gray and blue. Oh, that gets some attention. If you want a dark, that's one of them. Blue, gray. And I need some lighter uh, base color, which is going to be a kind of a Naples and gray. Naples and gray. See, I'm going to be putting some of that in. I need more gray. This is Naples and gray for, uh, let me lighten that up. Adding more Naples. And let's see what he, there we go. Let's put some right in here. Still working on the subtleties of saying light and dark, light and shadow. Now, when I have these blunt ends, I try to soft, soften, soften the ends of them. Try to leave the bluntness, but yeah, let me bring some red in underneath here, which I see in the reference. In other words, I don't have a real straight line that delineates the two. I, I broke, I've broken it. And I'm going to get some good darks up in here. So when I have a light coming in, I'm also saying, I'm so accenting it by putting some darks around it. And that's what a blue-red mixture does. Purples are good delineation lines. If you have a real strong light and uh, dark, sometimes putting a delineation line in between with uh, purple is a good way to do that. Okay, now I've got these um, strong blues back here, and the more I look at it, I wonder if I could make that a little bit more interesting. So I'm picking up these dark mixtures, and I'm going to put that to the side and come up with a surprise color, something to do with pink instead of blue. Still say it's in the, in the background. I need to clean this brush pretty good. And to do that mixture, I'm going to do some red and Naples and white. So it's kind of a soft pink. And I'm going to try that back in here. I'm going to leave some blue on the bottom, but... Oh my god, look at that! And let me clean that up. It's kind of a... Soften it. And put a few more stronger pinks. I actually got that idea by looking at this reference. Ralph, you're probably pulling your hair out now because this is what you were trying to do yesterday. So this is a classic do what I do, not what I say. But I'm doing on both sides to kind of balance it out here. 
And to give some indication, the bottom hasn't got the light yet, but the top has. Alrighty. I'm going to stand back and take another look at this. And if you guys could open your mics and if you have any questions, this is a really good time to, to give them to me. Pink. That's an unusual color, George. Are you talking about this one we just mixed? Yes. Yeah. Very interesting. You can see I have a, like a super dark right here and I'm going to emphasize a few more of those which is a gray, blue, red and get my darkest darks right up front. This is a little too bright I'm going to knock him down a little bit. Are you going to introduce this pink to other parts of the painting? Uh, this one right here? Yes. I actually have it right here. This is the mixture right here. Oh, okay, I see. Yeah, it's uh, Naples and red. Whoa, it has a nice, nice softness to it. It's really, really good. Okay, I think if I continue on, I'm going to screw it up. So I'm going to give it a, another look tomorrow morning. If anything really stands out to me, I'll make a change. But for now, I'm going to stick with it and just... Uh, make a signature in the lower right. So I, with all these darks, I'm going to probably use some of that pink stuff we have. It's a little bit lighter. So we can go with the signature. Alrighty, so that's it. It's a little too bright, that signature on one section, so I'll lighten it down just a little bit. I don't want to cause too much attention. I know uh, when I was getting into painting I, I noticed that Vincent Van Gogh had these huge signatures. It said Vincent. So I'm like, wow, the guy uh, really wants to say something about his name. I'm kind of just put it there. People like I have a signature in the front and whatever little I can do, that's, that's all I, I like to do. Oh my goodness, what, uh, I'm saying, folks, for this new limited palette, uh, we've really gotten some nice warms and cools. I chose this reference because I, I wanted to see if we could get these contrasts going here, and sure enough, I think, I think we've done a good job at doing that. So, good work. Thank you ver all very much. YouTubers, this is going to be it for this painting. We're going to be off for two weeks for the Christmas vacation, and we will see you on the very first week of January. So with that, thank you for tuning in.